uh, I think we can begin. Uh, thank you everyone for coming and attending this uh, uh, presentation on the Wiki Outdoor Training 2024, which is uh, going to be a, a new type of event in the Wikimedia movement, specifically in the region of Central and Eastern Europe. <laughs> Uh, so it's an uh, international event which uh, aims to develop leadership and uh, organizational skills uh, for conducting out uh, door activities like expeditions, uh, wiki takes uh, projects, uh, uh, photo walks, photo hunts, and uh, some other types of activities that usually take uh, place uh, uh, outdoors. Uh, this event will take place uh, in the beginning of September in the Prespo region in Macedonia, uh, specifically from the 7th to 8th uh, September. And uh, it will be organized by the experience team, uh, which organizes uh, the Macedonian Wiki expeditions since uh, 2015. Uh, so this is a team of uh, uh, four experienced members who have uh, accumulated uh, a lot of experience in these activities and would like to share these uh, uh, skills and uh, knowledge with the other participants from the region of uh, Central and Eastern Europe as well from uh, Central Asia. So, uh, one of the most important questions that we were asked uh, regarding this uh, project before submitting uh, the application was uh, why we need uh, one more activity, one more event, uh, which uh, for some may uh, overlap with uh, some other events that we already have in the movement. Uh, the main reasons are that uh, there are growing needs uh, to uh, share knowledge on uh, how to conduct uh, uh, expeditions and uh, some related projects in the movement. Uh, then the second main reason is that uh, we, in general, like uh, uh, practical events which aim to share experience uh, between uh, community members. For example, we have uh, a board training which aims to uh, share skills and uh, competencies that uh, members of the executive boards of the affiliates uh, need to have. But uh, we don't have uh, uh, events that aim to share uh, such experiences and competencies uh, uh, regarding the uh, conducting of uh, uh, specific projects. And uh, the third reason is that uh, the conferences that we have so far are incompatible to accommodate uh, one such event. For example, Wikimania is a good conference. The Wikimedia C meeting is also a good uh, conference. But the thing is that uh, they're very difficult and uh, uh, this type of events uh, requires a lot of uh, uh, logistics that uh, need to be uh, provided in order to be organized. So uh, I have to mention that uh, such, such projects uh, are not new in the movement. Uh, expeditionary types of projects uh, already exist uh, in uh, many different uh, parts of the world, especially in the CE region. So I have to mention that uh, there is a dozen of countries that uh, have organized or are planning to organize uh, such activities. And this is really a very good opportunity for their members to uh, hear and learn from the experiences uh, that uh, the Macedonian colleagues uh, want to share. Okay, uh, so a bit more about uh, how this uh, event uh, will be organized. Uh, so we have uh, identified four different types of uh, roles that uh, uh, the participants in one expedition uh, might have. Uh, so we have uh, a group of uh, drivers. These are the people uh, that uh, uh, drive the vehicles, uh, the vehicle that is uh, used to conduct the expedition. Uh, the second type of uh, participants uh, is uh, uh, a photographer. This is a person which uh, takes uh, pictures during the expedition. Then we have drone operator. This is the person which uh, uh, operates a drone to take aerial photographs because uh, there are some uh, cases in which it's very difficult to use uh, a simple camera to uh, take pictures. For example, if uh, uh, there are flat villages, then it's very difficult to use a camera to make a good photo. So that's why we uh, require a, a drone, which should be uh, flown uh, away from the ground in order to take a better, a better picture. And the fourth type of uh, uh, participants is uh, the uh, researcher. This is a person which collects uh, information and uh, searches through uh, reference works or other books in order to uh, find out materials which uh, may be useful to identify the objects the, during the expedition, but also uh, to use it as a reference materials to uh, write articles after the expedition has been conducted. So at this event, uh, we plan to have uh, seven different teams. Uh, 
which will consist of uh, four people covering all these roles. One of the teams will consist of uh, uh, the team of the Macedonian expeditions and uh, the other 24 participants, the other six teams will be uh, will consist of uh, people that uh, uh, were uh, selected uh, through a call for scholarships to attend this event. So uh, in total we have uh, seven teams uh, for uh, or 28 participants. Uh, 20 participants uh, will be scholars, four participants uh, will be self-funded and uh, we also have the four organizers. So the program will consist uh, uh, of, uh, will be uh, uh, divided into two days. The first day will be, uh, will consist mostly of uh, presentations and uh, workshops, which intend to share skills about uh, the activities that will be done on the second day. So on the first day, people will uh, learn how to uh, identify and represent the topics, which should be covered uh, with uh, these types of uh, expeditionary projects. Uh, then they will learn how to search for reference materials, how to con uh, contact with uh, external stakeholders, or how to uh, search in the libraries and archives to get more materials. Uh, then uh, people will also learn how to uh, locate objects using uh, satellite images. This is very important because uh, not always uh, the objects of interest are uh, geotagged or uh, uh, marked on the uh, maps that we use or the other devices, so it's very important to learn how to use satellite images in order to uh, to identify an object uh, through the shape which is uh, depicted there. Uh, then also people will uh, learn how to uh, drive a sport utility vehicle, how to take uh, high quality documentary pictures and also how to operate a drone. And on the second day, uh, we'll have a practical uh, conduct of an expedition. Uh, all the teams will uh, travel together to visit uh, some of the most remarkable places in the vicinity of the uh, place where the conference will take place. Uh, there is also material which uh, you can find on uh, META, which is a, systemic, uh, a systematic guide of how to conduct uh, expeditions. It's a learning pattern, it's uh, highly extensive, and I think it's a very nice material that uh, you should uh, visit in order to get more knowledge about uh, these types of uh, projects. Uh, regarding the participants, as I mentioned, we will have uh, 28 participants. 24 of them were selected uh, through a call for uh, scholarships or a registration form. Uh, 20 of them uh, are scores, which means that the organizers will provide, uh, uh, will cover all the costs for uh, their travel and accommodation uh, for this event. Whereas uh, four participants were uh, selected, four, four participants in, in indicated that they would like to uh, fund themselves uh, their participation in this event. Uh, we because we received uh, more than uh, 24 applications for this uh, event, uh, we decided to, uh, uh, whom to award the scholarship and, uh, and who to select for this uh, project based on the answers provided in uh, uh, the registration form in the scholarship application form. We asked uh, questions regarding uh, their interests and how they uh, intend to use the skills and uh, knowledge acquired in this event afterwards in their communities. And based on that, we decided uh, home to award the scholarship. And uh, at the end, I would like to also mention that uh, this is gonna be the first edition of this event. And uh, in the future, we also plan to make this uh, uh, event uh, happening on a recurrent basis every year. We already have some interest from uh, other communities in the CE region, uh, which uh, would like to host this event uh, next year. Uh, that's great and uh, we intend to collaborate with them in order to make this happen. Then it's also uh, very important to inspire other communities from other regions to consider uh, organizing such events, not only regarding the conduct of uh, expeditions or uh, wiki takes uh, projects, but also some other uh, events that intend to share practical skills because we really don't have a lot of such uh, uh, events in the movement. And uh, another very important goal is that uh, we also need to define the, the scope and the type of outdoor events that uh, are going to be covered uh, through these events because uh, now we focus mostly on expeditions and uh, similar types of projects, but uh, there are also other activities that uh, may require such uh, trainings in the future. Okay, uh, 
I think now we can move on to uh, questions from the audience. Uh, we deliberately decided to make this uh, presentation very brief so that we also include the uh, Q&A part of the session. Yeah, Mickey? Thank you. Um, so my question is, uh, since I am one of the I will be one of the participants, thank you. Um, uh, my question is, uh, the participants that are going to operate the drone, uh, what is the situation uh, within uh, Macedonia? Like, how are they, like, uh, are special uh, requirements needed for operating the drone uh, or only above, like, a, what do you say, municipal, like, where people live, or is it all around, or there are no rules regarding that? Thank you. Certainly there are rules uh, to operate uh, the drone. Uh, we will have two drones on site. Uh, we will not have a drone for each uh, drone operator, but you will provide it with uh, training. You will be explained the regulations. So our authority is CAA, Civil Aviation Authority, which uh, when will the flights will be announced on that site and they, they how we'll know uh, that we will operate the drones. That's how they will know. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll understand, is that more on did you make a internal skill sharing or do you have external experts who explain different topics? Uh, so you mean who is going to share the skills? Yes, as it external people or internal? Uh, yeah. uh, we're internal people. So uh, the presentations, uh, the lectures and all the trainings will be provided by the members of the Macedonian Week Expeditions team, which uh, has uh, a 10 year experience in this. So the idea is to share how other Wikipedians uh, conduct such activities so that other people from the movement can uh, learn from it. We're not going to uh, uh, get external experts involved in this because the idea is to uh, share what other Wikipedians do. Any more questions? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I didn't know that you do expeditions like this. I, I don't know if everybody is is uh, knows this. Maybe you can talk s some minutes or some shortly about wha what this kind of classic t expedition, not this is uh, teaching how to organize an expedition, but wha what in the different countries uh, you do. And another question is, uh, what language? I'm just interested. Do you speak English together, or what language you speak? Uh, I'll firstly answer the second question. Uh, given that uh, we have people from 14 different countries, and the common language is English, uh, the participants are expected to, to use English between them during the event. In case uh, there are people who understand or can communicate on any other language, it's, uh, highly, it would be highly appreciated but uh, all the trainings will be provided in English. Uh, regarding the first question, uh, the expeditions are not a new project. Uh, for example, for the first time, we learned about this project uh, from the colleagues from Poland at the first CE meeting in 2012. Uh, so the Polish community has already conducted expeditions uh, a couple of uh, years before that, I think uh, since 2009 or 2010. And the idea is to systematically cover uh, places of interest, usually geographically places with all the monuments located uh, in them or uh, in the vicinity uh, uh, on Wikipedia, on uh, the Wikimedia projects. Uh, so we typically, uh, for example, in our case in Macedonia, we uh, decide which areas to visit. We usually uh, make the choice uh, depending on uh, the availability of images and uh, on Wikimedia Commons and uh, content on uh, Wikipedia. Uh, then uh, we systematically cover all the places of interest that we can uh, find during the expeditions. Sometimes it's not possible to reach out to every single place, so we may leave some gaps, which uh, may be covered through different expeditions uh, in the future. Uh, the idea is that uh, we usually take pictures, uh, uh, find materials, and we use uh, all this collected knowledge in order to share it through the Wikimedia project. So, so we publish the pictures on the Wikimedia Commons, 
we uh, write uh, Wikipedia articles and uh, I have to say that uh, since uh, the project started in 2015 we have uh, covered more than 1,000 villages and uh, we have made more than 20,000 uh, uh, pictures of all these uh, places. And also it's uh, very important to mention that uh, there are different types of expeditions depending on uh, uh, the scope and uh, the vehicle that is used. For example, we have wiki expeditions, the classical wiki expeditions focusing on uh, uh, villages and uh, all the monuments located in them, but we also have uh, velo expeditions, uh, which are similar to the wiki expeditions, but the point is that uh, they're more green and sustainable because uh, participants uh, uh, ride their bikes to visit the, pla uh, the places, so there are no uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, then we also have uh, geo expeditions, which aim to visit uh, natural heritage sites and other natural places of interest like uh, mountains, waterfalls, uh, and other uh, geographical uh, uh, geogra geographical uh, types. Then we also have arch expeditions uh, with the goal of uh, visiting archaeological sites. We have astro expeditions with the goal of observing the uh, night sky from some uh, observatories that we have in the country. Uh, and we also have agro-expeditions which uh, intend to uh, document the agricultural, agricultural in the countries. So this is uh, how uh, the, uh, the wiki expeditions are structured in our country. Uh, this may differ from other countries. Uh, every country has uh, its own model on how to conduct expeditions and we highly appreciate it if uh, those people because we know that we are going to have representatives from uh, people in the other countries which conduct expeditions. We highly appreciate if they also share their models that uh, other participants can learn from. Okay. Hi, I'm Florencia from Wikimedia Argentina. I am curious about the expeditions in Macedonia and how many times uh, a year are you doing these expeditions, like one per month or, I don't know, two per year? And how uh, there are, um, I don't know this word in English, but there is an, an amount of people you can manage in the expedition or everyone can participate? Uh, how is, I don't know, my question is clear. So. Yeah, it's clear. Uh, so we have uh, four uh, expeditions uh, during the year, four uh, week expeditions during the year. Each expedition lasts for uh, two or three days. Sometimes it's possible to separate one expedition into two one-day or three one-day expeditions. Uh, the team consists of uh, four people, but uh, we usually, uh, sometimes we also bring uh, a fifth person, which uh, doesn't have some uh, uh, specific assignment during the expedition, but the idea is to uh, train this person how to organize uh, similar activities. So I have to say that uh, in uh, the past uh, 10 year period, uh, we have had uh, around 20 different uh, participants in the expeditions, even though the core team exists of uh, four people. Uh, and uh, the expeditions are usually conducted uh, from uh, springtime until uh, late autumn. So we usually skip uh, the winter time because the uh, daylight is uh, much shorter, the day is much shorter and uh, we don't have uh, enough uh, time to visit all the places. And uh, sometimes uh, the weather conditions may be also bad. For example, it may, uh, there are more, uh, more rainy days. Uh, uh, the weather is more unpredictable during uh, winter. So that's why I usually skip it. Even though I have to say that uh, once we organized the winter expedition, it was very foggy. Most of the pictures were not that great. And that's why we decided to completely move it to the other seasons of the year. But we usually begin, uh, so it's not comparable to the Southern Hemisphere, but in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the opposite way. We usually begin sometime in April and uh, ends up uh, in October. Okay, Maria? Thank you. Um, I will hopefully be a part of this training because I'm having visa issues. Anyway, I'll ask my question. I was wondering whether the pictures taken during the and training uh, and uh, information gathered during the research. Uh, is it mandatory to uh, upload to Wikimedia Commons or create articles? Uh, it's not mandatory 
nothing in the movement is mandatory, especially when uh, we're working with volunteers. But it's uh, highly recommended to use those pictures, to upload them uh, to Wikipedia Commons and uh, use across uh, Wikipedia articles. Yeah, I mean, um, during the training, it's not a part yeah, of the training. It's not, it's yeah, there is no obligation, the there is no obligation. So it's an event intended uh, to uh, train volunteers. We cannot uh, put an obligation, but uh, it's always recommended. A, a question related to that. Uh, when I have been doing expeditions, I always have this large backlog that takes me months and sometimes even years to upload. Do you have any training or tips for how to actually be effi efficient in after you come home to actually get it up to, to Commons? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there are different uh, tools for batch uploads on Wikimedia Commons, like, for example, uh, Petipen. Uh, I personally don't use Petipen or Commonist or some other tools. Uh, we usually make uh, about uh, 500 uh, pictures per expedition, and uh, we, usu we usually upload them uh, after the expedition has been conducted. Uh, there, is ne there may be some delays, depending on the availability and the volunteer time, but uh, I have never uh, encountered uh, uh, problems when uh, pro uh, when performing a batch upload of the pictures. But yeah, it's uh, recommended to use uh, some tools if you think uh, uh, they're useful. And it's also very important to know that some of these tools uh, uh, don't allow you, don't enable you to uh, to add uh, geotech. And geotech is very important because uh, after the expeditions, we create uh, maps on which we can easily map the places that were photographed. Uh, and a follow-up question to that. Do you also do that as a, a social activity, upload together? Uh, because I think that is one of the things that I find hard. It's very fun to be out together with people and take pictures. It's not as fun to sit at home alone and upload it. Mm, no, we haven't tried it. But uh, this is a very good uh, suggestion and something which uh, might work at this uh, outdoor training. Thank you. With the places where you go for the expeditions, do you try to get to places where it's hard for volunteers to get there by, by their own? Uh, yes. Uh, virtually at every expedition, there are places which are uh, difficult to access. And uh, we have some difficulties, but uh, we already have experience on how to, to access those places and uh, how to document. For example, uh, there are churches which are located deeply in the forest. It's very difficult to take a picture of them, but we can use our drone in order to take an aerial picture. So there are different strategies on how to approach it, and uh, I think uh, we have enough experience. We can go in the forest, get scratches from the bushes, and yeah. come back <laughs> with the photos. Okay. Uh, there was another question, yeah? I was luckily selected as your driver, so I have a question about the car. Which, which car will be going to drive? And uh, you said it's outdoor training. Are we going to uh, stay uh, outside uh, during the night, or are we going to mm, hitchhike back to village or something like that? Uh, no, the accommodation is not going to be intense. OK. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not going to be on the open sky. And uh, the cars are going to be uh, sport utility vehicles. Small SUVs. Small SUVs, yeah. But okay. you're not uh, really driving cars uh, of all terrain. It yeah. will be easy, easy path. OK, do you have a specific name or brand or something? Uh, Volkswagen T-Roc, uh, Seat Ateca, something like okay. that category. OK, thank you. Mm. Anyone else? With the normal questions and uh, comments, I would like to thank you. I really appreciate that uh, this was an interactive uh, session. There are very interesting uh, questions and even suggestions that we will try to implement during, during the outdoor training next month. Thank you.